Okay, hello everybody, and welcome back to Sailing Finland Camera Corner. It's been a while since last time because I've been building this studio come study now over the fall, and this is actually now the first video that I'm recording here in this new place. Today I'm going to be talking about a battery, uh, the small rig uh, VB50, one of the two V mount batteries that. Uh, small rig recently announced. The other one is the 99, which has about twice the uh, energy content compared to this one. Uh, there's been a few videos out on the internet on this battery. For instance, Caleb Pike over at DSLR Shooters has a nice introduction to the battery. So if you're more interested in the battery from a V-mount perspective, then check that one out. I'll link it somewhere in the description. I'm going to be more talking about the battery now from the perspective of actually powering my Olympus uh, EM1 Mark II and uh, associated uh, monitor. Mainly I'm thinking about uh, the Atomos uh, Ninja 5, but that one is actually being used right now to, to record this video, so I'm going to use the Fotga in place of that to do the demonstrations here. Uh, so mainly what intrigued me about this battery is the fact that it has a, a regulated 8 volt output. So, so the uh, EM1 takes, it says on the, on the handle where you can actually connect an external power that, that it takes 9 volts input there, but actually turns out that 8 volts works nicely. I've previously tried MPF batteries, but uh, unfortunately when, they, uh, when you use them, the voltage runs so low that they actually quite quickly, you know, become so, the voltage becomes so low that the camera actually turns off. So I was actually quite intrigued when I found out that uh, this battery actually had a regulated 8 volt input. So, so the point with the 8 volt regulated input is that you know, no matter how the, the kind of the internal power or the voltage of the battery uh, fluctuates, the output is always going to be that 8 volts. And actually when I've tested it, uh, I can actually run the uh, small rig battery into the ground when it says that there's uh, zero power percent power left, then still the internal voltage of the battery is about 12 volts, so it's enough to actually drive the output to the camera at the 8 volts. But of course this means then is that uh, you can't really use the camera battery indicator to monitor the power level because it will look to be full all the time, all you know, like until a second before it kind of collapses because the battery turns itself off. So you really have to be able to monitor the battery status from the battery, and we'll get back to that uh, a little bit later. So here's the battery. It's quite uh, nice and small. Uh, it's rated 50 watt hours. So compared to the standard EM1 uh, Mark II batteries, they're rated at about 12 and a half, so theoretically you should get about four times longer operating times with this battery. And when I've been testing it now with, with the camera, it, it seems that it's quite consistent. So of course, I can't tell you that it's exactly that because I, I don't have the equipment to measure the actual voltage and current to, to sort of validate it. But it, when I compare different batteries, uh, you know, the the, how the operating time that I get out of the different battery solutions are consistent. So at least you know it's the information is useful from that perspective that you can easily compare different batteries then uh, to each other. So so you can see that on the top here, uh, the battery has actually four connectors. So there's an eight volt, a twelve volt and then a USB-A and a USB-C connector. So these were actually the ones that I was thinking I would be using. Then in addition to this, the battery has, on, on the side here, it has a DTAP connector. And then of course, 
on the bottom it has the, the, the V-mount connectors. These ones I do not plan to use at all and therefore I have them covered with this, um, what do you want to call it, protector. Uh, unfortunately, this doesn't come with a battery from small rig, but I found something, a company called Blue Shape, and they actually supply these connectors with, or protectors with, with their batteries, and, and also sell them separately. So I got help by Paul Ailing to actually get hand on, on this, and I think, basically I think this should be a standard feature of all. Uh, V-mount batteries, so you can actually protect those quite sort of uncovered uh, connectors at the bottom of the battery. Okay, but let's see how this then works. Okay, so you can see now that, okay, I'll, I'll push that again. You can see now that the battery is full, it's at 100%. So there, there's a nice kind of big battery indicator here. And let's start by then connecting the camera. This was still one of the main points. So I, I have a dummy battery inside the camera. I got it off uh, AliExpress and it takes eight volts input. And so when I connect it to the battery, then let's see what happens. it nicely powers on the camera. Okay, so far so good. So you can see now that there's a small UI here, which indicates for the four different uh, connectors, uh, you know, the, the voltage that is being applied, and it shows the overall battery voltage. It's now at 16.4 and shows how much power there's left. So 99% now. Now things are getting a little bit interesting because I was kind of hoping that at this stage what would happen then is that I could connect the, the monitor perhaps to the 12 volt output. But actually what happens now if I connect something to the 12 volt output, you will see that actually I get an error message there. It says that you know it, it can't actually supply power to this one. So so even though, you know, this cable is not connected anywhere. So what it turned out was that, that actually when you connect something, only the first cable, the, you know, regardless of whether you connect it first to the 8 volt or to the 12 volt output, is actually the only cable that's going to get powered. And it doesn't matter, you know, how much, you know, uh, power draw you have it, it. It's just you know that order. So let's demonstrate that. So let's turn off the camera. I'll pull out the plugs, and then now I'll just go into insert the 12 volt plug first. You know everything looks fine. It says it's getting 12 volts, and now I'm connecting the camera to the 8 volt output. I get the error message. And as you can see, the camera doesn't turn on. So, so this was kind of the first disappointment here that this doesn't really work as planned. Okay, things are not totally bad. I have to actually take out the connector to, to restore the situation. So now what I can do is I can power the camera from the 8 volt output and then instead I'll, I'll take a a DTAP cable, and, and then I can connect the DTAP cable then to, to the DTAP interface here on the module. The good thing with the monitors is that they're, they tend to be very flexible with respect to what kind of voltage, the input voltage they take. So, so they're, they're quite good in that respect. So, so now let's see if I can turn on the monitor here. And yes, it turns on and I can run the monitor and the camera at the same time. I don't have the HDMI cable connected now, so there's, there's not going to be anything interesting happening there. Um, okay, so now let's add one more thing to the equation. So let's um, try to see if we could actually use then the, uh, 
uh, USB interface. So I'll, I'll get out uh, uh, here. I'll, I'll grab a hold of a USB cable here, and I'll take a phone. And let's see what happens. So now I have the first connection here attempt that I will be using is, is using a USB-C, USB-C cable. So I'm, I'm connecting that one to, to the battery. And then I'm connecting the other end to the phone. And let's see what happens. So actually we get an error message. So, so again, uh, I can't power on the, the phone. You know, it, it's again this thing that the, the, the second cable doesn't really, uh, you know, it isn't enabled. Actually, in this situation, the error message for some reason it goes away, but, but still the, the phone gets no power, so it doesn't charge. Okay, let's change the setup a little bit. So let's uh, do the same experiment. I'll take a a USB-A cable instead of a USB-C cable and connect it to the USB-A port here. And again, I'll, I'll connect the other end to the phone. And now things are getting a little bit weird because I get this sort of thing where, you know, it, it, it turns on and off. So, so it comes on and then it, it turns imme itself immediately off. So again, also this, uh, this mode of using it doesn't work. So, so the unfortunate conclusion here is that out of the four top connectors, I'm only able to use one connector at a time. Okay, last experiment here. So let's then do one more thing. So then I'll bring into the equation here, I'll bring in my uh, power bank and let's see what happens now if I actually connect the power bank. So I'll, I'll use the USB-A, USB-C cable and connect it to the power bank. And now this actually is a positive outcome in the sense that actually now it's charging. So, so that I can do, so I can use the 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 USB-C interface to actually charge the, the battery at the same time that I'm using, you know, the other interfaces then for powering the devices. Okay, one more observation, and that's now I'll, I'll disconnect the power bank, and I'll also turn off the camera here and disconnect, you know, the camera from the unit and now actually what what you can see is that the UI goes away so I only get the overall power thing and I get no more detailed information on the DTAP connector so the DTAP is still connected to uh, to the monitor here uh, so basically um, how, how I really would like this to work is, is, is first of all that I would somehow be able to keep the big power display on all the time regardless of what is connected. I mean this is really nice, it's readable and it, it, it's quite clear you know how much battery power I have left but unfortunately if I press the on off button here I get it for a few seconds and then it actually turns itself off. I get no additional information now on the battery internal voltage. I don't get any additional information on, on, on the power supplied through the DTAP interface. So I'm actually getting less information now about the battery status with, with just the DTAP interface connected. So, so I really hope that SmallRig would do something about the UI and, and usability here to actually make that small user interface usable. It's so low power that it doesn't really seem to have any meaningful impact on how long the battery lasts. So they could quite easily fix that from, from that perspective. 
Okay, so so that that was the short summary then of on the uh, small rig VB50 battery from the perspective of wanting to use the interface. It's then at the top there the, the A12 and and the USB CNA interfaces. So unfortunately, the situation is that you can only use one of those, and 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 also as I said, you know the uh, user interface and the display is not quite as good as I think it quite easily could be. But okay, if, if you found that this is useful, then perhaps you would like to follow Sail in Finland. Camera Corner appears every now and then, and of course the main output of the channel is videos about uh, sailing and boating in Finland and things related to that. So if that's your main interest, then of course also follow our channel on YouTube or you can also find Sail in Finland on Twitter and Facebook. So check it out. Thanks for listening and welcome back.